Just can't place my heart for all these done. When I consider and I look around me and I see what all that God has done, I can't thank Him enough. We do want to take our prayer request to the Lord. We want to remember Sister Roland in our prayers. She needs a healing in her body. We also want to pray for Sean Skinner. He's, he's pretty bad sick and God needs to touch him. We also want to continue to pray for her Sister Fernandez. We need to pray that she, that she will have a speedy recovery. Amen. She is in Memorial Medical Center for at least three days. We also want to pray for Jackie Jackson. She's having nausea and stomach issues. Possibly a virus. God is able. Amen. We also yes, want to yes. remember Mary Jean Bush. Thank you, Jesus. Um, she is receiving results from her test on Friday from her stay at the hospital. We need to pray to God for good results and God will touch her. Amen. Amen. We want to pray for Sister Robbins, the pastor's wife at the Cedar Grove Pentecostal Church in Tupelo. She has cancer of the bladder and pancreas. Um, she has started treatments. They are making her very ill and weak. We need to pray for a miracle. Amen. I just believe God is able. Yes, He is. He's been to her life for the God that we serve. Amen. Amen. Let's take these to the Lord in prayer. If you have a need, raise your hand. God knows all these needs. Lord, we come to you. Lord, thank you, your Lord, for everything that you do. We give you thanks and glory and honor. We just pray, Lord, that you would move in all these requests. God, each and every one of them, Lord, Sister Fernandez, God, touch her body, Lord. God, Lord, Jackie Jackson, God, touch her in the name of Jesus. Mary Jean Bush, Lord, we pray, God. Nicole's mom, God, we pray you would touch her, Lord. Intervene, God, we pray. Oh, God, you're able to touch Sister Robbins right now, God. God, you're able to turn the situation around, Lord. God, touch Sean, Lord. Move on him, Lord, and heal his body, God. God, touch Sister Roland, we pray, God. God, let the healing virtue flow, God. Touch her in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. God, we believe in you. We trust in you, God. God, we know without a doubt, God, that you're in the Lord. Believe in God to do this. Amen. 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 Well, praise God. I feel the Lord. God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly of the Lord that we have. He is still a healer. He's still on the throne. Well, praise God. He's concerned about you. He's concerned about me. Well, praise God. Hallelujah. Elder Roland, would you pray? Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. Let's continue.
the things you see rob you of your joy. Of course, we walk by faith and not by sight, so keep your eyes on the Lord. doesn't matter what it looks like everywhere else. It's going to be all right. Amen. I still have joy even with a bunch of empty pews tonight. Let's pray for all of those who aren't here tonight. God will touch them. So good to see you here. Amen. Worshiping and praise of the Lord. God bless you. All of our children, you are dismissed to Super Church. And I want to remind you again, it's coming Sunday. Uh, of course, before Sunday, tomorrow night, ladies' night out. Called Swap Shop. Uh, bring accessories and kitchen, kitchen, kitchen items. And I guess that's what y'all kind of swap around. Um, have a good time tomorrow night. All the ladies, please be here. And uh, have a good time tomorrow evening at 7.30. Uh, then, of course, this coming Friday night, a music workshop. Those of you involved in uh, the music ministry, make sure you check the schedule. And then, of course, Sunday. You know, that's Friday and Saturday for those involved in the music. Uh, then the Sunday is All Nation Sunday. Um, have you been talking to your friends, uh, getting them to come this Sunday? Try your best to get them to come. We have a lot of nations represented here. And be sure and bring some good food uh, to whatever um, country you might be from or uh, do a special dish of another country. Let's just put that food together and have a great time and a great feast together. Uh, Sister Brenda Collins has a birthday tomorrow. Is that right? Tomorrow? Uh, happy birthday. Yes. Sing happy birthday to Sister Collins, Sister Hodge. Well, happy birthday to you. Oh, happy birthday to you. Job chapter 3. Job chapter 3. And we want to read verse 20 and verse 21 and then we'll skip to verse 24 and 25. Wherefore is life given to him that is in misery and life unto the bitter in soul which long for death but it cometh not and dig for it more than for hid treasures. For my sighing cometh before I eat, and my roarings are poured out like the waters. For the thing which I greatly feared is come upon me, and that which I was afraid of is come unto me. I want to talk to you for a little while here tonight about discouragement 
and how to deal with this thing called discouragement. And uh, I would probably be safe in saying that everybody here has at one time or other in your life battled with discouragement. Amen. And anybody here has not? I'm not sure that I'm telling the truth here today. No hands, so it looks like all of us have had to deal with this thing called discouragement. And I, I pray that I can say some things tonight that will be of help to you if you're not battling it tonight, whenever you do come up against this thing called discouragement, that uh, you'll know how to deal with it, how to handle it. And if you're here tonight and you have been and are even tonight having to deal with this thing called discouragement, I want you to leave the service tonight with your head up high and strengthened by the good word of the Lord. Aren't you, aren't you glad the word of God has the answer for every situation? whatever we have to go through and face in life, I'm so glad we've got the Word of God Amen. to help us and we can turn to and find the answers that we need. Amen. Let's pray together. Lord, we're so thankful for your goodness and mercy, for the wonderful privilege we have to be in your house tonight. And I pray that you will anoint me to minister your Word, anoint uh, the ears of the listeners here tonight your anointing rest upon us. We know that your word will not return void. It will accomplish that that it is sent out to accomplish. We want to be encouraged and strengthened by your word tonight. We'll praise you in Jesus' wonderful name. And everybody said in Jesus' name. Now before you're seated, put your hands together. Let your hands to the Lord. You may be seated. Webster Dictionary gives this definition of the word discouragement. It says that it is a loss of confidence or enthusiasm. It's a dispiritedness. It's a loss of enthusiasm. Discouragement. And of course, feeling discouraged is a result of many times of an undesired outcome to a situation. Although the Bible does not specifically mention discouragement, there are many examples of those in the Bible who experienced discouragement for various reasons and they were overcomers. They struggled, they faced discouragement, but when you look at their lives and see the outcome, uh, they were overcomers of discouragement. And the followers of Jesus Christ are not exempt from encountering discouragement. However, there is hope for believers because God is sovereign. And He is our Lord. He is our Master. He is our Father. He is sovereign. And so there is hope for the believers when they encounter uh, this thing called discouragement. Uh, there are three reasons that I want to give you for becoming discouraged. Uh, number one is self-inflicted discouragement. Uh, David, we have an example in the life of David. David experienced discouragement because of sin. Uh, he and Bathsheba had an affair and then David intentionally sent her husband to be killed in war because of her pregnancy and thought that they could hide it. Of course, this is found in 2 Samuel 12, verses 9 through 10. His discouragement became or came because of sin in his life. 
Uh, of course, we know that human nature is inherently sinful. And because of this, the flesh and the spirit constantly are at war against one another. Galatians chapter 5, verse 17, Paul talked about the war that goes on between the spirit and the flesh, the war that is raging. And uh, so when, when we are concerned with gratifying the flesh, then temptation becomes an issue and it can lead uh, to behavior that is really contrary to the Word of God. But uh, the power of the Holy Ghost is able to guide and to direct our actions and it will provide a way of escape. Paul talked about that in 2 Corinthians 10 and verse 13. However, the choice is up to you and me. We have the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Ghost is available to help us and guide us and direct us and provide a way of escape. Uh, but it's up to us to make the choice whether we're going to uh, be victorious or whether we're going to give in to this flesh and to, to sin. Uh, giving in to sin brings about death. It's found in the book of James, chapter 1 and verse 15. But Death is not always physical. It can be relational. It can be spiritual or any other type where a breach occurs. And, but whatever the situation may be, and if, if a person is discouraged because of sin, they have fallen into sin, I, I'm glad to tell you here tonight that God is merciful. And God will forgive if that individual will repent of their sins. And after repentance has taken place, then restoration and redemption will follow. And so many times people deal with this spirit of discouragement because of, of sin that they have committed. And if you're here tonight, and if that's where you fall or the category that you fall in that maybe you're discouraged because of some wrong that you have done I, i'm just telling you that the lord's ready to hear your cry and you can get it on the blood and you don't have to continue to walk in discouragement you can come out of that if you'll repent get it under the blood the lord's ready to take care of you. now the second thing is because our Discouragement become because of disobedience. And of course, I realize that uh, that sin, and it kind of goes along with this, disobedience is sin. But uh, another example we have of uh, someone that was discouraged because of disobedience was the man Jonah. Uh, one of the best examples that we have. Uh, Jonah had received explicit instruction from God. Uh, but he chose to do the very opposite. Jonah chapter 1, verse 1 through 3. So let me tell you, when, spe when specific instruction is given by God, it is beneficial to us to obey what God says, as the Holy Spirit will never lead in the wrong direction. When God gives us instruction, the Spirit of God gives us direction, you can bank on it. It's going to be the right direction. It's going to be the right thing to do. And so Jonah chose to do the very opposite. And therefore he became very discouraged. Now the Lord will allow a chance for redemption when we ask for forgiveness. Just as he permitted Jonah to have a second chance after he repented. Um, you know, Jonah was about ready to just give it all up, you know. Throw me overboard. I'm the reason for all of this trouble that's going on here in this ship. Throw me overboard. I'm living in disobedience. I've disobeyed God. and That's why we're going through what we're going through. Just throw me overboard. You talk about being discouraged. That's discouragement when you're ready... For for to throw you overboard in the midst of a storm and you realize there's some things out there that are uh, bigger than you are. Sure enough, God had prepared a special one for Jonah. But when you read the, the rest of the story, uh, Jonah, uh, of course, <laughs> repented and 
And God forgave him and gave him a second chance. Aren't you glad that we serve a God with a second chance? And so you disobey the Lord, it's going to lead to discouragement. But if you're here tonight and you're discouraged because you've been disobedient, well, I've just got good news for you. If you'll repent, turn to God, ask God to forgive you, and make up in your mind you're going to live in obedience to God, God will give you another chance. I said, God will give you another chance. And I think we ought to thank Him for being a God of a second chance. I'm just trying to tell you tonight, if you're discouraged, you don't have to continue in that. And then the third thing is discouragement. Um, many times will come because of external forces. Not anything that you have done, not sin that you have committed, not disobedience on, on your part, but just external forces, things that come to us from, from outside. In fact, the Apostle Paul experienced discouragement even though he was in the will of God. Paul dealt with this thing called discouragement. Uh, some of the situation and setbacks that the Apostle Paul encountered were from the enemy trying to thwart the plan of God. And, you know, but other times it was just life. And God allowed it to happen. There are just some things that happen in our lives because it's life. That's just, it's just life. It, the Bible even tells us that in this life, you live in this life, you will have trouble. You will have Tribulation. I mean, it's that's not being negative. That's just being realistic. That's life. And the Apostle Paul, he had to deal with the, some of these things. Some came from the enemy trying to thwart God's plan. But then other times it was just life and things that just happened. And God allowed it to happen. Sometimes God will allow things to happen in our lives. And if God does allow these things to happen, you understand that God's trying to uh, teach us something through this. Uh, it, it, God allows it to happen so that we can maybe grow or mature or learn some things. And so don't get discouraged if things come your way. It's just a part of life. Or, and God allows it to happen. Just learn the lesson that God is trying to teach us. Uh, it is important to remember that no one is exempt from facing disappointment. No one. I don't care how old you are, how young you are, how rich you are, how poor, how educated, how ignorant, unlearned. Um, doesn't matter. Uh, no one is exempt from facing disappointment. But our response to discouragement makes the difference. It's our response to these times of discouragement. Uh, going through difficult situations does not make one a failure. But he said, well, you know, I, things that I'm having to go through, I, I tell you, I, I just feel like I'm a, I'm a failure. No, uh, going through difficult situations does not make one a failure. However, it produces character and fruit essential for being a disciple of Jesus Christ and provides a testimony for others. So just because that you're facing difficult situations and going through things and, and maybe you have, have stumbled, you might have even given in a little bit and you, you, the devil wants to try to make you think that you're a failure. You're not a failure. Just get up again. Make up in your mind. I, I may have made a mistake and I may have given in to this situation and, but I've learned my lesson and I'm getting back up again. I'm getting back in the fight. I'm, I'm not going to sit here and give up and die. I'm going to learn from this. I, I, my my character is going to be better and I'm going to be able to bring more fruit. Produce more fruit in my life because I'm not going to give in to it. I'll have a testimony to others. That if God brought me through it, He can bring you through it. Right. Amen. Amen. So when life happens, when life happens, you know, when those things, that it's just life. When it happens, it is important to remember 
God's sovereignty. And in addition, the Bible states everything that we experience will work out for the good for those who love the Lord oh, yeah. and who are the called according to His purpose. Right. Amen. So we have to keep our focus in the right place and overcome the spirit of discouragement. Discouragement can be a product of failure. People become very discouraged if they try something and they fail. Uh, maybe a, a person's trying to live for God and they, they make a mistake, they fail and feel like they're a failure and they become discouraged. Even, even though we experience disappointment, it's not God's will for us to remain in that state. The Word of God makes it clear that we will experience troubles. However, Jesus overcoming the trials that He faced during His time on earth is evidence that we can do the same because the Spirit of God lives within us. And the Bible says, greater is He that is in you than he that is in the world. All of us are going to experience troubles. All of us are going to face situations in our lives. But We've got to remember God is sovereign. God is on our side. God is going to take care of us if we'll, we'll put our trust and our confidence in Him. Amen. David, in our text here tonight in Psalms 42 and 5, he said, Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted in me? You, you sense that discouragement there? Then David said, Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise Him for the help of His countenance. We, we talk about Job and, and what, a, what a great guy Job was. And we rejoice every time we hear messages preached about Job. But, but look at, at verse 20 of chapter 3 of Job again. Wherefore, is life given to him that is in misery and life unto the bitter in soul, which long for death, but it cometh not, and dig for it more than for hidden treasure. For my sighing cometh before I eat, and my roarings are poured out like the waters. For the thing which I greatly feared has come upon me, and that which I was afraid of is come unto me. So, Job, though the end of his life, we rejoice and shout over. God blessed Job. The latter end of Job was, uh, he had twice as much in the end of his life than he had in the beginning. And uh, what, a, what a great testimony. And we, we shout about the life of Job. But understand, even Job got discouraged. He was a perfect and an upright man. I mean, worthy that... The, the Lord would ask Satan, have you considered my servant Job? And have me bragged on him a little bit. I mean, have you want God to be able to brag on you? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Well, if he does, then the old devil might want to say, well, let me add him then for a little bit and see if he's what you think he is. <laughs> so if you've, if you've ever wanted God to brag on you, God bragged on you and things start happening and going haywire, well, it just might be the devil just didn't believe God, and God's going to make a believer out of him if you'll stay true and hang in there and make up in your mind. I mean, I understand why it's all happening, but, but I know it's all going to work out to the good because I love the Lord and I'm called according to His purpose. Amen. 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 When we experience discouragement, we become overwhelmed by a sense of hopelessness. People that are discouraged, they, they're overwhelmed by a sense of hopelessness. Uh, our, our reason for existence seems to become altered by a specific event. Life no longer seems to matter or have purpose anymore. All hope, joy, and life seem to disappear. A lack of joy represents mourning, and a body without a spirit is a corpse. But during these times of brokenness, I'm telling you, we've got to turn to God. There's no time to throw up your hands and quit. There's no time to throw in the towel. It's time to turn to God and, and cry out to God. Lord, I, I don't understand why this is happening in my life, but, 
I'm not going to I'm not going to give in to discouragement. I'm going to set my eyes upon you and, and know that uh, you can take care of me and you can bring me through this dark valley and you can and bring me through this situation. In times of brokenness, we've got to turn to God. People turn to so many other things instead of turning to the right place in these times in their lives. Hezekiah felt it when he was told that he was going to die. And the Bible states that he wept sore. Isaiah 38 and 3. Esther was another one. She became acquainted with, uh, with this when, when she was informed about a plan to annihilate her people. In Esther chapter 4 and verse 4. Mary and Martha, they experienced it at Lazarus' death when they grieved in John chapter 11, verse 31 and 32. I mean, there, there was nothing they could give in exchange for their hurt except to give their heart to God. Notice Psalms 51, 16 and 17. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O oh God, thou wilt not despise. Glad that God's not going to turn his back on those that are broken and a broken spirit and a contrite heart. He will not despise. You know, David, David was at his lowest when he sinned against God with Bathsheba. He exposed himself to God in his Psalm 51 prayer of repentance that we preached about this past Sunday morning. Uh, you know, although our discouragement may not be a result of sin as it was with David, his brokenness is what turned the ear and the heart of God just as it did with Hezekiah and with Esther and with Mary and Martha. It was the brokenness that turned God's attention to him. You know, they, all of these became familiar with discouragement because of their circumstances. You see, sometimes we can be so hurt by our situation that we depend on our emotions to make us feel better. And, and turn our situation around. However, whatever the cause of distress may be, I just want to tell you, God is the only one who can mend the heart and restore the spirit. Only God can do that. He knows we will try to barter and bargain everything except our heart in exchange for healing. But, but how can he heal our heart if we're not willing to give it to him? Our brokenness, transparency, and willingness to give of ourselves is the only sacrifice God will accept for our healing. But when we do that, God's ready to bring healing to us. Look at Job chapter 14, verse 7 through 9. For there is hope of a tree, if it be cut down, that it will sprout again, and that the tender branch thereof will not cease. Though the root thereof wax old into the earth, and the stock there die in the ground, Yet through the scent of water, it will bud and bring forth boughs like a plant. Wow. In what were believed to be dead situations, Hezekiah, Esther, Mary, and Martha held on to their hope in God. They just held on to their hope in God. Their problems were not resolved overnight. But God's promises allowed them to believe God was setting them up to be in a better position than before. I'm going to tell you, it may seem like it's been a long time. Well, just, just, just believe that God is setting you up for a better position than before. God knows what He's doing. He knows what He's doing. Hezekiah prayed and God added 15 years to his life. Sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Now Hezekiah could have just given in to his discouragement and said, I'm going to die. I don't want to die, but that's just the way it is. He could have died a discouraged man, but he prayed. But 
somebody shout, he prayed. He prayed, he prayed and God added 15 years to his life. Esther sent word to all of those who were a part of the decree to fast and, and they were spared according to X, uh, Esther chapter 4 and verse 16. Mary and Martha, they believed that Jesus could heal Lazarus and he was brought back to life. To the natural eye, these were lifeless situations. However, their hope in Jesus their hope in the Lord was the first step to their prayers being answered. I, I don't care. I don't care if it if it looks like a lifeless situation, your struggle that you're going through and facing right now. I'm just here to tell you, if you'll pray to God, if you'll trust in Him, if you'll understand that God is on your side, God is for you, you're His child, He has not forsaken you, He has not forgotten you. Romans 12 and 12 says, Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. This is how you handle and deal with this thing called discouragement. You rejoice in hope. That's why the, the apostle could say, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, Rejoice. How can you do that? Is because you're rejoicing in hope. You've got hope. Yes, it may look dark and, it, and the storm may be raging, but I have hope when trouble comes my way. Why? Because I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. God is on my side. He's my heavenly Father. Man, somebody shout, I have hope. And so we rejoice in that Hope. And then patient in tribulation. Somebody shout patient. patient. Patient in tribulation. And then continuing instant in prayer. This is how you deal with discouragement. You rejoice in hope. You may not feel like it, but rejoice anyway. Not rejoice in how you feel, but rejoice in the hope that you have. And then be patient in tribulation. Be patient in tribulation. But I want this thing to get over with now. I want to get through this valley now. Well, sure, all of us do. But it may not be the will of God. It may not be God's timing. And so we just say, Lord, I'm going to be patient in my tribulation. I'm just going to be patient because I know that you're working it to my good. And I know that I'm going to come out on top. I know that there's a light at the other end of the tunnel. I know I'm going to make it. I'm going to be patient. And so what am I going to do? I'm going to get up every day and just, just get up and walk. Some days I may not feel like running, but I'm going to walk. There may be times I have to slow down to a walk, but at least I'm moving. At least I'm going somewhere. I'm going in the right direction. And then there are going to be times that I'm going to pick up the pace. And, and I, I may even run a little bit. And, and might even feel like flying at times. But I'm going to be patient in tribulation. And then continuing instant in prayer. Instant in prayer. There's no power like the power of prayer. We've got to be instant in prayer. Amen. Once we surrender our hurt, our loss, our grief, our pain, our embarrassment, our frustration, and any other emotion associated with our discouragement, we were able to see the light amid our darkness. When we surrender all of that to God. Giving our cares to God enables us to walk through the storm with Him. Instead of allowing hurt and fear to consume us. We walk through these things with God. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because thou art with me. In surrendering the weights, blocking the paths for God to come in, we place ourselves in a position to receive life again. 
Recognizing the hope that we have in Jesus Christ elevates our circumstances to a level where our spirits hunger to see the work of God manifested in our lives. And this only comes through praying consistently, keeping the Spirit of God activated within us. And it is because of this that we can endure the hopeful expectations and not give in to our despair. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Continue instant in prayer. Understand that God hears you when you pray. Well, Brother Hodge, I prayed and I didn't feel anything. God hears you when you pray. The Bible didn't tell us you have to feel a thing to know that God heard you when you pray. You've got to have faith and believe that when I sincerely pray to God, God hears my cry. I don't have to feel chill bumps going up and down my spine. I don't have to feel the foundation of the building shake. Just the very fact that when I talk to Him, He's already told me that He's there to lend an ear to me. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. His ears are open unto their cry. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered them out of them all. That's the hope that you and I have. And that's why we can pray and worship and pray through it all. We can deal with discouragement. We don't have to give in to it because of the hope that we have. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 6 and 7 Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptation. Notice that. Wherein ye greatly rejoice. These folks were rejoicing even though they were going through manifold or having manifold temptation. He said, wherein ye rejoice, ye greatly rejoice. Though now for a season, everybody say it's a season. It's for a season. Some of you may be in the winter time of your life. But it's only a season. Springtime is coming. Springtime is coming. And I don't have time to get on that. That's another message within itself. The seasons of life. We all have to go through seasons in our life. And you'll face those more than once. Just like we face the changing of the seasons more than once in our lifetime. We face it every year. But we've got to have them. Some of you don't like winter. I like winter time. You say, well, if you were up in way up north, you might not appreciate it too much. Well, that might be the case, but... I like cold weather. I'm not a summer guy. But um, wintertime. Also, I like to have a pretty hard winter. So it can get rid of some things that we have to deal with in the summertime, like gnats and mosquitoes. Wintertime of your life gets rid of some things that will bug you to death later on down the road if you don't get them taken care of enough. So the winter time. But spring is coming. Things may look bad. No leaves on the trees. and Everything may look dead. No life around here. Well, hang in there. Springtime is coming. It's going to come. Just as sure as the sun comes up tomorrow. Springtime is going to come after winter. Now, we're in the season of fall. That's some folks' favorite time. The fall. Changing of the colors. And, and, uh, well, sometimes change is important. And it's needed. Some changes that need to take place in our lives. and Sometimes it's hard to deal with change. But it's only for a season. Then the next season's going to come. And so he said, it's, it's, it's now for a season. You're in heaviness through manifold temptation. That the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perish it, 
though it be tried with fire, might be found unto the praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Did you see that? The trial of your faith is much more precious than gold that perishes. Why? Because the trying of your faith, it's working eternal things in your life. That's why it's more precious than gold that perishes. Now, there are going to be times in your life that you're going to have to do like David. You're going to have to learn to encourage yourself in the Lord. David encouraged himself in the Lord despite what was happening in the natural realm. And I don't have time to go into the story of, of the city, Ziklag, that was burned. And the, and the enemies, David's enemies, had come in and taken all of their possessions and their wives and their children and, and taken them away. And, and David's men were even ready to turn on him and take his life. Oh, David didn't have anybody to encourage him. There are going to be times in your life that there's not going to be anybody around to encourage. You're going to have to learn to encourage yourself in the Lord. David had to speak life to himself. His response dictated his outcome. And in the end, the Bible tells us that he recovered all that he had lost. And so there are going to be times, sometimes when, when we have exhausted all of our feel good resources. We have to speak life into ourselves. We have to talk to ourselves. Give ourselves a good talking to. Go stand before the mirror if you need to. Look at yourself and say, I need to talk to you for a little while. And encourage yourself in the Lord. As Christians, we must learn to Trust in God to bring us out of our despair rather than just our fellow believers because there will be times when others cannot provide what we need. There will be times that others are not able to provide what we need. And so having confidence and faith in God will allow us to respond as David did in his time of distress. We'll be able to speak life and strengthen ourselves. We can speak it. Encourage ourselves. In the Lord. That's how you deal with discouragement. You have to. Encourage yourself. In the Lord. I'm glad for the times that. That people have encouraged me. I, I'm, I'm thankful for the times. That people have said the right thing. At the right time. I'm thankful for every message. That I've heard from behind the pulpit. There have been times that I felt like that message was, was for nobody else but me. Have you ever felt that way? Boy, that message was straight to me. I needed that tonight. Amen. And I thank God for those times. But I have seen those times when I didn't have a preacher preaching. And there was no good saint of God around to speak some words into my ears. And, and, and the heat was on and the battle was raging and the enemy was throwing everything he had against me. And oh, discouragement. Where is everybody? Where is everybody when they leave? Where? where? I'm all by myself. You know. Discouragement. I just had to stand and plant my feet, square my shoulder, and start talking to myself and speaking life into my situation and, and speaking positive and, and letting the devil know I, I, I'm not giving in to this discouragement. I, I, I'm going to make it. By the help of the Lord, I'm going to make it. I've got hope. I've got God on my side. I'm going to make it. I'm a child. You've got to learn to encourage yourself in the Lord. Take advantage of all these other times and be thankful for that. But you've got others that can discourage you and people that can encourage you. Men of God, and the message that there are going to be times you're going to have to encourage yourself. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33 and 34. 
The New King James Version puts it this way, but seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. So we can experience discouragement and still glorify God in the midst of pain because we trust in Him. We trust in Him. The process of becoming Christ-like requires pruning. It requires molding and shaping and reforming. And when we place His agenda ahead of our own, our disappointment pales in comparison to what He has planned for our lives. You believe God has a plan for your life? Amen. And He will add to it everything we need and more because of our submission to His will. God, I submit to Your will. In all things, everybody say in all things. All Situations and circumstances. We have got to learn to believe that God is sovereign and that all things are going to work together for the good to those who love God and those who are called according to His purpose. Having faith in God allows us to have hope in a hopeless situation. Having faith in God. And when we declare, I want to be like Jesus Christ. Have you ever said that? When you say, I want to be like Christ, we surrender the right to be in control of our lives. I've seen people who I've heard them say that, but I don't think they really meant it because they were not ready and willing to surrender the right to be in control of their lives. When you say, I want to be like Him, then you're saying, Lord, you take control. You're, you're in command around here. It's not my will, but your will be done. I want you to take control of the situation. I surrender to you. Thus, we must learn to respond to discouraged moments like Jesus did. How, how, did, how did He respond? While Jesus' accusers were attacking Him, He did not respond in a hostile manner. He did not abandon His mission, though many rejected His message. When he walked through the garden and found his disciples sleeping instead of praying as he had requested, he allowed none of these things to distract him from his purpose. None of them. I'm going to tell you, during difficult seasons, we must adhere to the leading of God's Spirit and His Word to direct us to a place of life and peace and joy. Now, Jesus Christ came so that we would have life, and the Bible says that more abundantly. That means being in a state of joy despite our circumstances and finding that scent of water in the desert. But I say the joy of the Lord is our strength. When He said, I give you abundant life, that means we can live in a state of joy despite the circumstances, the troubles that's going on in our lives, you can still have joy. You can still have joy if you'll deal with this thing called discouragement. Psalm 42 and 5, the psalmist says, Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted in me? Notice what he said now. Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise Him for the help of his countenance. <laughs> oh yeah, I feel cast down. Then David said, I want to tell you what you need to do. You need to hope in your God. And then you need to praise him. Don't sit there in the mully grubs. Don't just Stay down. Get up and praise Him. In the midst of all of the disappointments and 
spirit of discouragement that come upon you. Praise Him. And then Psalms 40 or 34 and 18. The Lord is nigh unto them that have a broken heart. And saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. God's near you. In those times when you just you just don't know what to do, which way to go, where to turn. He's nigh. He's right there. And when you cry out to Him and say, Lord, I've gone as far as I can go. I've done everything I know to do. I'm turning the reins over to You. And sometimes we try to hold on to the reins until we really make a mess out of things. And aren't you glad He's willing to step in and say, all right, you're ready to surrender it, but I'm ready to take over. We'll get this thing on the right track. We'll get it going in the right direction. Everything's going to be all right. Discouragement. Oh, yes, we all are going to face it. All of us have to go through it. But if you'll just remember the answer to dealing with your discouragement is to learn to rejoice, not in how you feel, but rejoice. In hope. Amen. And how do, you, how do you get that hope? You get it from the Word of God. You get it by studying His Word and grabbing a hold of those scriptures that give you hope. Amen. And then you rejoice in that hope. When everything is crying out, be sad. Everything is crying out. Get up. Throw in the towel. Just said, no, I'm going to rejoice not in the way I feel. If I give in to the way I feel, there wouldn't be a whole lot of rejoicing going on. And I'm going to rejoice in the hope that I have. This too shall pass. God's going to bring me through. Everything is going to be all right. I'm a child of God. The Lord is far me. That's the hope that you have. Rejoice in it. And then be patient in tribulation. You may have to go through it for a week. You may have to go through it for a month. You might have to struggle through it for a year. But just be patient. And the way you learn to be patient is understand that God's working it out in His own time and way and will. And we'll let Him have His perfect will. We'll let Him have His way. He's going to bring it out all right. And then continue instant in prayer. Be ready to fall on your knees at any time. Go to God in prayer. Call on Him. He said for you to do that. Cast your cares upon Him. Pray to Him. Talk to Him. He wants to hear your cry. He wants to hear your voice. And you can put discouragement on the run. You can put discouragement on the run. You don't have to give in to it. You don't have to let it push you into depression till you're ready to just give up everything. You want to be encouraged in the Lord? I think we ought to stand to our feet right now and say, Lord, I'm just going to rejoice in the hope I have in you right now. Could you do that? Could you just rejoice in the hope that you have for me? Praise God. Oh, yes. You've got to learn to rejoice. You've got to learn to rejoice. Not just in the sanctuary. You've got to be able to rejoice outside these four walls. You've got to rejoice in your bedroom. Rejoice in your living room. Rejoice in your backyard. Rejoice right now in the street of your car. Learn to rejoice.
Shake. 